All right, UFC 287 fight week is finally here, and honestly, this one feels like it snuck up on all of us. Like, I did not expect Adesanya and Pereira coming so soon. Like, I feel like this was a fight that was just in the distance, but it's just snuck up on me. I don't know if you guys feel the same way. This whole pay-per-view has a lot of fun fights as well as the prelims. There's so much to break down. I might do a video even breaking down every single fight, but that's going to take a lot of work, a lot of studying film. So if you guys do want to see that, let me know in the comment section below. Maybe it'll be more of like a podcast style kind of video where I just sit here and talk. I don't know. We're going to have to see how this whole thing plays out but let me know if you guys would be interested in that at all but today i want to talk about the main event adesanya Pereira. now we've seen them fight three times yes three times and i want to do a video breaking down all of their fights but let me know if you guys want to see that because that'll take a lot a lot of work but i'm willing to do it if you guys comment in the comment section below letting me know you guys want to see this but these two have had pretty close fights up until this fourth fight that has not been really one-way traffic any which way of course the first fight Pereira won a pretty close decision a lot of people claiming adesanya won the second fight, Pereira knocking out Adesanya cold after Adesanya hurt him early on in the fight. And the third fight in MMA went similarly, with Pereira having close rounds early on, gassing out, but then getting the finish in the fifth and final round. Now, I already have a video breaking down UFC 281 where I kind of talked about how close this matchup was. A lot of people had in their mind, yo, Adesanya is just going to be Pereira. I said in my video, though I picked Adesanya, I said, hey, I wouldn't be surprised if Pereira wins. I might wind up changing my prediction. I didn't change my prediction, I'll be honest but it just shows how close of a matchup this truly is especially on the feet now there's a lot of question marks going into this fight which is unexpected seeing that we've seen these guys fight three times already but there is a lot of question marks for instance how well could adesanya incorporate grappling going forward can Pereira defend a takedown against adesanya those are all questions i'm going to answer in this video today but first as we always do when we break down a fight i'm going to be talking about these two's methods of victory talking about their weaknesses strengths and let's talk about the champ alex Pereira. now a lot of people are disrespecting this guy see it on twitter if you guys follow me on twitter make sure to follow on there i constantly see people trashing Pereira, calling him a weight bully saying he's gonna lose to anybody else in the middleweight division saying he got lucky against adesanya so much disrespect to this guy like dude the guy had four mma fights or something like that in the ufc going into his title fight the guy was able to perform in one of the biggest fights in his life and i know that this has been a topic as of late especially this weekend i know mma guru and lucas tracy they did videos talking about Pereira. i honestly didn't see them but I know that a lot of people are kind of saying, hey, Pereira isn't this bad dude, but you guys need to put some respect on Pereira's name. The dude is a lethal kickboxer and training with Glover Teixeira constantly, one of the better grapplers in the UFC. So trust he is working on his takedown defense. You even see him training with guys like Jalton Almeida, which if you guys follow the channel, you guys will know I always talk about Jalton Almeida and how I think he's the future of the heavyweight division. That guy is legit in the grappling department. And I think Pereira's method of victory is kind of like how he fought the last fight. Going forward, using the jab. The jab of Pereira was giving Adesanya tons of problems. That's what's going to win Pereira the fight. Jabbing and making Adesanya go backwards against the fence. And I think for Pereira, it's important to bank those early rounds, especially if he thinks he is going to gas out because I assume he's going to have another massive weight cut. Bank the first and second round. The first round was razor close. And then as you guys remember, Adesanya hurt Pereira at the end of the fight. You can't have that happen. Bank those early two rounds. Maybe even get the third round. Try to win a razor close decision and keep it on the feet. I think that's the key to victory here. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Alex Pereira incorporate some takedowns. I don't think Adesanya would be expecting that at all. So maybe incorporate takedowns, but my only fear is that'll only gas him out. So maybe just keep it on the feet and just worry about defending those. I think his best path to victory is staying on the feet. I said this in my last video, breaking down the first MMA fight and predicting it. Pereira has the higher fight IQ. He obviously also has the power advantage. Pereira is underrated in the fight IQ area. But let's move on to Adesanya. What can he do to beat Pereira for the first time in his career? I think where Adesanya's best traits lie is his versatility. He's able to switch stances. You don't see Pereira doing that. He's able to throw question mark kicks. He also has incredible hand speed, which I think will be a key if he does want to stand with Alex Pereira. Incorporate the speed. I think Adesanya's anticipation and being able to move his head is really well. And I think you should maybe trust that a little more. Yes, it's a little dangerous when you're talking about a guy like Alex Pereira. So maybe try to do that when his power fades. But I think if you're going to stand with him, definitely have some good hand speed. He also has to check those leg kicks. I think he also should maybe have his stance a little less wide. We saw Alex Pereira really take advantage of Adesanya his leg kicking them the whole fight adesanya even attributing that to him losing the fight so i trust that that will be adjusted i think all he has to do is just kind of close his stance a little bit it's a very wide stance and he also has to be in the middle of the cage or have alex Pereira moving backwards he cannot afford to be against the fence that's where alex Pereira landed that big left hook that wound up ending the fight and finally let's talk about the elephant in the room adesanya's grappling can he out take down alex Pereira? i think it's risky i think alex Pereira, being the bigger guy is definitely going to be stronger and he's training with all these grapplers and we 
know Adesanya isn't a grappler. If Pereira was planning to fight a guy like Robert Whitaker, I'd say, hey, he probably isn't going to be able to defend all the takedowns perfectly in a full training camp. However, against Adesanya, a guy that, yes, trains wrestling, of course, but doesn't really use it in fights, I think he'll be able to defend those takedowns a lot easier. It's definitely easier to defend rather than actually get a takedown. So I'm curious to see how that's going to work out. I think Pereira will definitely look for Adesanya to go for takedowns. I think he's definitely been preparing that. I think last time Adesanya should have went for more takedowns because Pereira wasn't expecting it as much, but I think Adesanya's ego just couldn't do it. I think he really wanted to prove that he could stand with Pereira, but it's risky. It's risky for anybody in the world to stand with that guy, but I think I've done enough breakdown. Who do I think will win? My final prediction is Alex Pereira. Alex Pereira, I think, will once again get the victory for the fourth time. It's just one of those things where, look, he's beaten Adesanya four times. At what point do you just accept that this guy has this guy's number? I think Adesanya will try to go for takedowns, and I think a lot of people are going to be surprised to see Pereira defend those takedowns. And I think because of that, because Adesanya is a kickboxer, not really using wrestling so much in fights, I think we might see Adesanya slow down a little, even though he has great cardio. I think both guys might be a little more tired than they usually are. I'm predicting Alex Pereira to win by knockout once again, and I'm going to say in the third round. But I could also see this going to a decision, maybe. I don't know. This is going to be a tough one, but I got Pereira. But let me know what you guys think in the comment section below. UFC Fight Week, I'm so excited for this pay-per-view. I'm going to be breaking down the Masvidal Gilbert Burns fight again. I don't know if it's going to be tomorrow, or, but it's definitely going to be sometime this week. Don't worry about it. And we're back. You know, the other two videos were kind of scheduled uploads. I didn't feel like they had so much work put into them. I feel bad giving you guys kind of short uploads or uploads that I don't necessarily work so hard on. But don't worry, this whole week, I'm going to give you guys the best UFC 287 coverage. And we're going to be talking about everything. And while we're at it, talking about predictions, my prediction is Alex Pereira will miss Wade. I think he's going to miss Wade. But I think the fight will carry on anyway because it's just such a big fight. And then we'll worry about the title after. But guys, thank you guys so much for watching. You guys are always so supportive. Comment in the comment section below. Who do you guys have to win? This fight is razor close. Thank you guys for watching. Thank you guys for the support. And I'll see you guys in the next one.